Crown Radio and the Gospel Truth Podcast. I'm Mike Robinson, your host. we got an interesting show today. We're going to be talking about can chimps and other apes actually learn language. Over the last couple of decades, we've seen a lot of TV shows, nature shows, and other researchers trying to demonstrate that chimps and apes and gorillas actually do learn language. There was a book written recently called why chimpanzees can't learn language and only humans can by Herbert Terrace. Terrace's goal was to prove, get this, his goal from the start of his research was to prove that chimpanzees could learn language. But then he realized past research was badly flawed that seemed to imply that they can learn language. Terrace noticed that rigid a rigid examination of videos of past ape language research revealed that the human trainers had accidentally been signaling and prompting chimps in advance of their use of sign language. One chimp named Washu was taught sign language by Alan Gardner of the University of Nevada. The chimp seemed to learn over 300 words and at one point appeared to signal water bird when a swan flew by. Another, Kanzi, a gracile chimp, is said to have learned to communicate using 3,000 symbols. Mr. Terrace, a disciple of Skinner, was studying animals and he expected to confirm his professor's research and his professor's ideas. He had a bias towards the notion that apes could be taught to employ language. He wanted to demonstrate that apes could be induced to acquire real language that was, that was at least human-like. It turns out, however, that the prior research that seemed to show that apes can learn language was clearly flawed and apes did not truly learn language. That's what he found, even though that's not what he wanted to find. After his tenacious research, Terrace now asserts that chimps absolutely cannot learn language. Let me give you that quote again. Terrace asserts now that chimps not learn real language. Brash, who wrote a review of his book, Terrace's book, in the Wall Street Journal, many animals communicate complex information. Bees convey precise details regarding the location of food sources using the waggle dance. Use different alarm calls to indicate whether an approaching predator is an eagle, a python, or something else. Mr. Terrace demonstrates that these actions are not language, as well as what's used in apes also. They do not express immaterial ideas, nor can their expressions be reshuffled to communicate something new that has meaning. Real words are the building blocks for real language. Real words are movable units for actual language that Terrace found apes and other animals did not employ. Using his observations, even though it went against what he wanted, it went against his bias, Mr. Terrace seems to demonstrate that animals don't truly understand or use their expressions the way that people do. Apes, he maintains, use them only as commands, as imperatives, as directives, yet humans also use words as declaratives as well as in narratives of far more complex language unity. Terrace writes, I quote, In all human languages, imperatives constitute a tiny fraction of a speaker's vocabulary. They are different essentially from declaratives in language inasmuch as declaratives need a social response. He then notes, I quote, Unlike human children who use words to name things in a conversational exchange, chimpanzees only use signs to request or earn rewards. Barish opines, Terrace affirms that words supersede grammar. An ancient question is whether there can be thought without words. Looking at animals, the answer is clear. They engage in plenty of thought, and yet according to Mr. Terrace, they lack words, at least in the sense of arbitrary designators of abstract concepts." End of quote. Most Darwinian evolutionists place apes at the top of their evolutionary chain next to humans in intelligence. But is this actually correct? Is this actually 
hippos and goats might be more intelligent than chimps and gorillas, going against the chain that Darwinians put as the evolutionary end with men at top and apes secondary. Perhaps it should be people and then crows and other birds. A, Greece, a group of researchers in Australia decided to put goats to the test. To do so, they set up a contraption that held fruit at the end to access the tasty treat. The goats had to use their teeth to drag a rope down, which activated a lever they had to lift up with their mouth. They could figure all of that out, and the fruit was theirs. And the goats did. Nine out of 12 of the goats managed the task after four tries. When researchers came back, after 10 months, they found that the majority of the goats still remembered how to work the system. Goats figured out the device, used the tool, and remembered how to do it months later. In Africa, only certain tribes hunt down elephants. Scientists played recordings of a group that hunts them down and one that doesn't hunt elephants. When the elephants heard the recordings of the elephant hunting group, they became fearful and moved from where the sound was coming from. When they heard the language of the group that doesn't hunt them down, they didn't move or change their disposition. Then the researchers played recordings of the language that scared them, the, the language of the hunters that actually go after elephants. But this also included women and children and men. The elephants only became fearful when the voice came from men. <laughs> Do the hunting in that tribe. That's how smart elephants are. Crows may be the most intelligent animals. I have videos on that touch on that, and you can also Google that if you want to see lots of research on that. So crows may be the most intelligent animals there are, right up there next to humans, perhaps much smarter than apes. They plan and they barter, among many other things, do many intelligent activities that apes do not do. So I'm more for crows than I am for apes, and of course that undermines aspects of the idea and evolution in the chain leading up to humans. So are humans unique over animals? Can you demonstrate man is made in the image of God? Most of the work on this subject by atheist or secular scholars will assert almost nothing, if not nothing, is unique of humans over animals. Christian sites usually list five to ten unique traits listed, some of which can be scientifically, scientifically contested by skeptics. But I'll list dozens, many of which are compelling and demonstrate that man is not a mere animal, but unique. Man transcends the animal world. Number one, consider the possibility that humans are unique because we have the ability to wipe out all life on earth as we know it. Only humans can do that. Another trait humans have that animals lack, we as people define ourselves. Animals don't. Except if you are, of course, the dog Snoopy in the Peanuts comics. You say, well, I'm a man of peace or I am a poet, or I am a moral man, or I am a dancer, and on and on. People define themselves, animals do not. Number three, I don't know if animals do abstract thinking, but humans alone do syllogisms. Animals do not do syllogisms. We've never seen one, it's never happened, it seems impossible. Additionally, number four, nothing sets us off from animals more than we humans, not animals, recognize the laws of logic. The law of identity, A is A. The law of non-contradiction, A cannot be A and non-A at the same time in the same way. Number five, humans, not animals, debate truth. Number six, men, not animals, affirm moral absolutes. Number seven, people, not animals, make civil law. Number eight, humans, not animals, hold criminal trials. Number nine, men, not animals, employ energy that is not generated by their own bodies. And cars and planes. The Romans used wind, water, and animals. We use coal, oil, gas, and solar. Number 10, humans, not animals, employ symbolic representation that can help us constitute and structure and grasp our world. The cultural world is a realm shaped by symbols, and only humans do that. Symbols enable us to grasp and to interpret a thing or situation beyond a mere physical reaction to the external item. It is a concept, not the things being referred to, that symbols define or symbolize. Only humans do that. Number 11, humans alone and not animals make tools that make tools. We produce tools, a drill that can make more tools and machines. Number 12, humans, not animals, bury their dead out of respect. Number 13, 
Humans alone can understand the material world. They are loftier than that. They are universal and everywhere in force, the laws of logic. So wherever you go, whether it's the moon or on another planet across the solar system or even beyond our solar system into another almost unknown galaxy, if you land there, A cannot be A at the same time in the same way. So that's interesting because it transcends our world. It also uh, is in the spiritual world. When I am in the spiritual world and I go to heaven and I see my Lord, I am me and the Lord is the Lord. So A is not not A at the same time in the same way. So that's interesting. Now, the transcendental can also be utilized in arguments. We talked about the transcendent, now we're talking about transcendental. Transcendental arguments attempt to discover the preconditions of human experience. For some X, some aspect of human experience, whether it's truth, knowledge, or induction, for X to be the case, Y must also be the case, since Y is a precondition of X. Since X is a case, Y is a case. So what is the ontic ground of the very possibility of knowledge, truth, and reason? God, of course. God is. God alone has the attributes to be able to account for all these universal immutables. I have many videos on that subject if you want to look it up on Cross and Crown Radio. Next, number 14, men, not animals, anticipate and ruminate about getting older. 15, humans, not animals, seek to eradicate disease. Number 16, people, not animals, are aware of self and contemplate the afterlife. Number 17, humans alone and not animals directly worship God. Yes, all creation praises God, but purposed and determined worship is a human trait. Number 18, humans alone, not animals, seek beauty. C.S. Lewis called it a longing joy, which defines, I quote, an unsatisfied desire which is itself more desirable than any other satisfaction, in which I like to think of, in the broadest sense, as sort of a uh, creative reservoir. The paradox of joy arises from the self-defeating nature of human desire, which might be thought of as nothing more or less than desire for desire, a longing for a longing, end of quote. There's many other traits about humans that make humans different than animals because we are created in the image and likeness of God in Genesis 1. I'll just end, I have a video, a complete video on that also. You want to see all the dozens and dozens and dozens of traits that humans have that animals don't. You can see that on Cross and Crown Radio on YouTube. So let me end with number 28. Humans, not animals, say jokes. <laughs> Do you know that? What's the difference between an atheist and a mirror? What's the difference between an atheist and a mirror? One speaks without reflecting and one reflects without speaking. <laughs> Humans, not animals, also write poetry. Now, the most important features that are unique to humans is that through faith, by God's grace alone, because of Christ alone, we can have a union with Christ. Animals can't. We can be redeemed. We can be justified, which means you're declared righteous. You trust in Jesus, that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. You turn from your ways, trust in him, you're declared righteous. You have forensic righteousness. The righteousness of Christ is imputed to you. That's good news. Your sins are washed away. Humans alone can have it. Humans alone can be glorified with God. No, we don't become God. We still have human nature, but human nature is perfected and in glory with Christ. Next, what humans can have that animals can't, we can have the gifts of the Spirit because we can be filled with the Spirit. Next, we can edify the church and on and on and on. So, that's the show for today. Now, you heard the gospel that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead on the third day. If you're an atheist, Hindu, Muslim, whatever, it doesn't matter. Put that away, turn from that, and come to Christ. If God is putting on your heart to come to him, do that right now. God's grace is touching you right now. Profess with your mouth, turn from your ways, and profess to heaven, I believe. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus is Lord and Savior. I believe Jesus died on the cross for all my sins and was buried and God raised him from the dead. I turn from my ways. I give him my whole life and my whole heart. I will follow him all the days that I live. If you did that today or recently with, in a ministry, you came to Jesus Christ through faith, by grace alone, 
write us. We will send you two of my books. I've written over 40. If you want, we will send them to you free. We'll even pay the postage. We love doing this. It helps us stay in contact with people that recently got saved, whether they came out of Islam or Buddhism or agnosticism or uh, maybe a lukewarm Christianity, whatever it is. We love to send you material if you came to Jesus Christ. So just message us or email us, and we'll get that material to you soon. This is Pastor Mike Robinson. Until next time, saying may God richly bless you.